Hey everybody, welcome to today's video. It's with a heavy heart I make this video about the Charlie Kirk political assassination, but I think it's very important that we discuss anti-sniper technology and anti-drone technology because in this day and age, there will be people that seek out weaknesses at large events. So we're gonna talk today about how Charlie could have been protected, what could have been done differently, but the point of this is to look forward and look into the future of how do we protect people at future future events, at concerts, etc. But we're going to do a full breakdown about how Charlie was taken out by a sniper's bullet at Utah Valley University. It was one shot to the neck that took Charlie out. The sniper was in a hidden nest up above in a building, but one drone could have spotted this sniper. So why wasn't there a drone up there protecting Charlie? We're going to dive into that. And what is the plan moving forward for local law enforcement, university law enforcement, the FBI. How do we keep this from happening? Again, because we've seen SWAT drones that operate around concerts. We've seen different drones that have AI that can predict where a sniper might be, but there's so much technology right now that's evolving. Even Australia has invested billions of dollars into anti-drone technology prior to the Olympics coming there, but we have to talk about how we keep this from happening so that we don't have a situation where potentially what happened in Ukraine versus the Russian bombers is happening at a concert. I mean, can you imagine some crazy you-know-what showing up outside of a concert with a flatbed truck that has 50 drones on it with some sort of explosives, and now they're targeting the entire crowd at a concert? We have to keep that from happening. I hope there's people from law enforcement watching this video that can help move this forward, help move the ball down the field, and get us to protect these large gatherings, protect speakers at events, and keep something like this of what happened to Charlie from ever happening again, and it's with deeper respect that I make this video. His wife, Erica, his two young children are in my thoughts and prayers. And mostly I'm just sorry for Charlie that this happened and there wasn't some protection in place to keep this outcome from happening. Because this wasn't just a hit. This is a huge wake up call for the world because we're now in a world where snipers and drone swarms are the new weapons of chaos. So we need shields that can hit back at these weapons of chaos. And it's worth me saying at the time of this video, the suspect who the FBI believes did shoot Charlie is in custody. So at least there's that. But really, I want to focus on how do we prevent this moving forward. So we're going to dive into the tech that could have saved Charlie, anti-sniper and anti-drone systems from DARPA, Androl, and Cutting Edge Innovators. These aren't prototypes. They're actually battle-ready systems now that should be at every university or every concert or every large sporting event or every speech where someone of interest is giving a talk or there's someone who might need to be protected. These systems are ready now. We can pull them off the shelf and plug them in. It's just going to take a little bit of an investment and courage from these larger organizations, these universities to make sure that this anti-sniper and anti-drone tech is in place because again, it already exists. It should have been at Utah Valley. We have to move forward. We have to protect people that are at large events like this. So today we'll break down how to lock down a sniper at a rally, how to stop a drone swarm from turning a concert into a kill zone like those Ukrainian strikes that gun gutted Russia's bomber fleet in June of 2025, and we'll do three alternate scenarios where Charlie Kirk actually walks away alive. Three where anti-drone tech saves a concert from a terrorist swarm, so that'll be a different section of the video, and where a sniper targeting a rock show gets smoked. We gotta talk about that. We gotta fight this like good versus evil. These snipers have to be smoked before they're able to take out any innocent people. Think about the shooting at the Jason Aldean concert in Vegas. The technology that exists now could also prevent that from happening, so these systems have to be in place, and you, me, all of us, we have to stand up and we have to demand this type of technology at these different events and concerts. We can't stop doing what we're doing. We can't let fear and terrorism keep us from living our lives. Charlie Kirk would not want that. He would want us to move forward and face this evil head on and not let it take away from the quality of our lives and our family's lives. We have to stand up to this kind of evil, but the way that we stand up to it is by using overwhelming tech and overwhelming force to defeat it. So we're gonna talk about an action-oriented style of how to do this moving forward, so let's roll. So Kirk is mid 
speech at a rally at a crowd at UVU's open air event. A lone gunman is perched hundreds of meters away in a concealed position on a rooftop. He's in a prone position and he lines up his high powered rifle, likely some sort of 30 out six, one round clean through the neck and Charlie Kirk drops. Chaos erupts and security had no advanced detection. So time to lock into the anti-sniper arsenal, a system that detects, disrupts, and eliminates threats before the bullet even flies. DARPA's got a boomerang system and that system is a game changer. It uses acoustic sensors that triangulate gunfire in milliseconds, pinning the shooter's location to within a meter. But it could also pick up sounds that are related to the rifle. So the rifle touching the roof or basically racking back the bolt action on that rifle, that would be picked up by the acoustic sensors as well. These have been battle tested in Iraq and it's like radar for bullets or gun noises. So catching the sonic boom of a round would be super easy. But even before that, the system potentially has the ability to pick up on where that sniper is. So picture it sweeping the venue, sniffing out the sniper's nests for Charlie Kirk prior to that bullet even being released. Then there's DARPA's Sea Sniper system that's evolved from Crosshair's tech and it uses radar, optics, and a AI to spot scope glints, lasers would bounce off of enemy optics, lighting them up like a beacon. So imagine that sound coming from racking back that gun, putting around in the chamber, or just the gun hitting the rooftop, and then a high-powered optic hits that scope, lights them up, and now that shooter can't see anything. So then you can save who's ever being targeted in a split second. Or a drone with a sea sniper system could have scanned UVU's perimeter, flagging the shooter's position. Almost 500 meters out is the range of a system like that, and that would have been well within what they needed at this event. Andro's lattice system also uses AI platforms and ties it all together. It fuses sensors for real-time threat maps. It's like a digital war room. It spots a rifle barrel's glint in a window or on a rooftop via camera feeds, and it's fed real-time to security teams that can take action within split seconds. So a system like that just makes sense. And then there's Raytheon's optical augmentation detectors, and that adds another layer. It picks up thermal signatures for a scope lens pre-shot. For a concert or a rally, you'd deploy a net. You'd have drones with IR cameras, ground-based boomerang arrays, and AI crunching data to alert security in under five seconds. The cost to set up this system is only $50,000 to $200,000 per setup. So picture this, the sniper lines up on the rooftop, but a dazzler laser fries his optics, turning the scope into a useless glow stick. It's checkmate, you know exactly where that threat is, and now their weapon is essentially unusable. But at a live event, you could scale this up even more. You could have boomerang mics on different rooftops, especially around this courtyard where Charlie Kirk was, and then sea sniper drones could be patrolling the skies. Even just one of these things up above, looking at the event from potential sniper nests, you could spot where this sniper was, you could spot them getting on the roof and walking to that place where they got in that prone position. It just makes sense. And then you've got Lattice running AI as Overwatch. So Lattice is kind of going to be like the maestro orchestrating the entire op, looking for a sniper's perch, looking to see where they could execute this attack from. So it's a predator's game that is now flipping the script. So obviously that sniper in this case was the predator, but if you have that sea sniper drone patrolling the sky, now that sniper becomes the prey and the tables are turned back to their natural order where someone like that is put in the place that they should be put in as prey. The predator's gotta be the good guys. And in this case, the predator would be the sea sniper drone system that would be patrolling the skies and would be linked into Lattice and AI. So you could have one member of Charlie Kirk's team watching and reviewing that Lattice AI script to see where the threat is real time. You would know it before that person even got in position. And now you can clear out that whole courtyard and keep everyone safe. All right, let's run through the op. And these are three scenarios where this tech could have saved Charlie Kirk's life. So picture this, Kirk's up on stage. He's got the crowd going. He's doing what he does best. He's getting both sides to engage in a nonviolent way. Let's say the sniper's up on a rooftop and chambers around at about 300 meters meters out. Boomerang's acoustic array catches the metallic click and then AI flags it as a threat. Drones confirm a thermal signature in that area where that sound came from and then security moves to cover Kirk in seconds. A SWAT team storms the position, taking the shooter down non-lethally if needed and then Kirk's back on stage an hour later, turning the foiled hit into a defiant speech. No blood, just victory for Charlie Kirk. 
Now let's move on to hypothetical situation number two, a sea sniper's laser strike from a drone. So a sea sniper's drone sweeps UVU's perimeter. The sniper's scope reflects the laser's probe, target acquired. That reflection from the sniper's scope is picked up very easily by the AI that's being run in that drone. Then Lattice AI pings the team. Hostile, 10 o'clock, 300 meters. A counter sniper unit hits the scope with a dazzler, blinding the shooter. The shooter bolts and is disoriented and is nabbed two blocks blocks away. Kirk finishes his speech unaware until briefed of what went down on that rooftop. He raises a glass to the tech that had his six. This is an outcome that we all wish would have happened and hopefully will happen in the future to other speakers. Now let's talk about hypothetical situation number three, and that is a lattice lockdown. It's a full spectrum defense. So it involves a boomerang system, a sea sniper drone, and lattice AI that are all in sync with each other. The sniper's movement triggers multi-sensor fusion. AI predicts the shot trajectory exactly where it will come from. Automated ballistic shields pop up around the stage and a drone jams the shooter's optics. Security neutralizes him before he fires. Kirk walks off stage, fist bumps the team, and the crowd roars, clueless to the danger that was just avoided by that next level technology. Now let's shift to the skies a little bit. So if you've been at a concert before, especially in an open air venue, you know what I'm talking about. It is a very vulnerable position and we have to protect these moving forward. Please hear me out. Anybody who's in charge of local governments, city governments, state events, or national federal events, we have to protect against the reoccurrence of what we saw in Ukraine going up against crowds of people. Australia is already on top of it with billions of dollars being pumped into anti-drone technology. And we've got to do that here in the United States. So Ukraine's swarm attack in June of 2025 obliterated Russian air bases and they did it with cheap explosive laden UAV drones. A terrorist targeting a concert could launch 20 to 50 quadcopters from a nearby lot or a road nearby a venue. Each could carry explosives or a chemical payload aiming to hit a packed stadium mid-show. Here's how we'd stop them. So Andrel's anvil system is pure aggression towards drones. Autonomous drones that hunt enemy UASs, those unmanned aerial systems, they ram them out of the sky like missile intercepts. Lattice AI coordinates them, tracking hundreds of targets, prioritizing by threat level. DARPA's mobile force protection program brings directed energy weapons, high-powered microwaves that fry drone circuits from a mile out. And then D-drones, RF sensors detect drone control signals, geolocating the operator operator for a takedown as well. So it has all the basis is covered. For a concert, you would want to layer that on top of each other. So RF jammers, think radio frequency jammers, would cut the drone to pilot link and then Andrew sentry towers for radar and then Raytheon's HELWS laser to zap UAVs mid-flight. The cost of these is a little more expensive, but for a large venue, this is totally doable. So about a million dollars for a full setup and that's pocket change for a festival's budget. These large venues need a budget that can counter these types of threats. And these systems are active now. Andrel already guards US bases, D-Drone protects stadiums, so we could expand that out and make it an even bigger reach. These are sky shields that turn drones into scrap metal. So let's talk about scenario one, radio frequency jamming takedown of drones. So let's say a terrorist cell launches 30 drones from a van near a Coachella set. D-Drones RF, those radio frequency sensors, pick up the control signals two miles out. We already know they're coming two miles out. The jammers kick in and they sever the link. So now the operators can't even control these drones anymore. The swarm would just drop like dead weight, crashing harmlessly. Security would trace the signal to that van and they could apprehend the operators as they're trying to escape. And the show would rage on, everybody enjoys it, and nobody's the wiser in the crowd. They're just there to enjoy that amazing music festival. Now scenario number two, we'll call this one Anvil's Aerial Kill. 15 explosive drones breach a Jonas Brothers concert's perimeter. Anvil's Anvil drones scramble, each slamming a target with surgical precision. Lattice AI tracks the stragglers that might be coming in after the main wave guiding ground teams to the launch site. The crowd mistakes the mid-air collisions for pyrotechnics, the threat is neutralized, the show is uninterrupted, and everybody continues on with their life, enjoying an amazing show. And if you're not a Jonas Brothers fan, no problem. Let's just say Metallica or Thomas Rhett, some awesome artists that you love being uninterrupted and everybody staying safe would be an amazing victory for this type of technology, and it's totally possible right now. Now let's talk about scenario number three. I like to call this one the laser strike. So a swarm of 25 chemical armed drones target a Taylor Swift gig. 
Raytheon's HELWS locks on, firing laser bursts that burn out drone motors. The swarm collapses in seconds. Lattice pinpoints the operator's van via RF radio frequency triangulation. Swift powers through her set. The crowd is safe, and she doesn't know anything happened until she's briefed otherwise. And everybody sits around and gives a big cheers to the technology that kept everyone safe. This is a real reality that we're in right now, where all these events all these places that have these famous speakers should be covered by this technology. There's just no excuse not to have it. And now let's talk about an event that was like that Vegas shooting. So let's say a sniper targets a concert and they're aiming for the lead singer and the front row fans from a high rise 500 meters out. It's a packed area. Lights are flashing. Music is pounding. The shooter's got a clear shot until the tech kicks in. Boomerang's acoustic array catches the Rydal's setup clanking noises. Sea sniper drones detect the scope's glint and Lattice AI fuses the data, alerting security. Sniper, one o'clock, 500 meters. A Dazzler laser blinds the shooter's optics, forcing him to abort. He literally couldn't see anything at that point. And then SWAT teams move in. They neutralize him silently. The singer hits the final note. The crowd roars. Everybody's happy. And the threat is eliminated without a single shot being fired. This is the reality of what's possible, guys. And this is the reality of the technology that should have been protecting Charlie Kirk. So that's the playbook for how to protect against this moving forward. Anti-sniper and anti-drone tech, DARPA, Anroll, Raytheon, D-Drone, they turned vulnerabilities into fortresses. Charlie Kirk's loss was a gut punch, but this gear ensures that no one else falls to a coward's bullet or a drone's payload. Concerts, rallies, stadiums, they can all be locked down and protected if we act now. And let's encourage lawmakers, police departments, sheriff's offices, let's encourage everyone, universities, to get on top of this threat. This is inexcusable. Charlie Kirk should still be with us, and these technologies now need to be intertwined into every large event moving forward. So please help spread the word. I would really appreciate it. It would mean a lot to me, and I think we could honor Charlie's memory in the best way by going out, living our lives, continuing to utilize free speech, but also more effectively protecting everyone that's out there enjoying their lives with the technology, with the AI that's available to us today. Thoughts and prayers are with Charlie's family. I think it would make Charlie proud knowing that we're utilizing this technology to never let this happen again and to focus on the fact that free speech, dialogue, both sides having discussions is what makes America great. Thank you all so much for watching this video. Let me know what you think in the comments below. How do we get this message out to universities? How do we get it out to sports stadiums, concert venues, places where people are giving public speeches? How do we get this technology out to protect all of them and to protect us? Because free speech is something that's near and dear to our heart as Americans and it needs to be protected. Thank you guys for watching. Please check out this video right here. That's the best compliment you can give me. It would help the channel grow and I would greatly appreciate it. So I'll see you on this video right here. This is Ryan, also known as Max Afterburner, also known as the fighter pilot next door, signing off.